Hello, this is Brian Castles for Lattice Semiconductor. I'm going to go through an overview of the Lattice Diamond software. You can see here the start page which has links to our online help as well as things links to things like our um, manual such as the Lattice Diamond user guide. It also includes the software update center in case any software updates are available and a way to open projects, create new projects, import existing ISP level projects, or open recent projects. So let's open an existing project. Once you open an existing project, first thing you see is the report view, which has all the reports for implementing your design, such as the report summary, reports for synthesis, map, place and route, etc. Also from the icons you can see with these green check marks means that those processes are current and those reports are current. Uh, an icon such as this question mark shows that this process has been run previously, but is not current for the latest implementation of your design. The report view opens in this general area, which is for uh, all the tool views that open. So any of the tools that you open from the toolbar icons here will open in this tool area. Down below we have the uh, output console area where we have uh, tabs for the output, which is any of the output echoed from any of the processes that run as part of Diamond, a TCL console for looking at TCL output, uh, a tab specifically for errors and a tab specifically for warnings. On the left we have the project-wide views. Uh, this is the process view which shows you all the processes that have been run uh, to implement your design with green check marks for the ones that have been run. There are also sub-processes for some of these which you can optionally check. Therefore if I run any of these processes such as uh, map, these processes will be automatically run at the same time. To uh, not run them, you can just unselect them, and this is saved on a per project basis. Next, we have the file list, and in the file list, you can see um, the device that you set, and you can see your implementations, which are three here, and your strategies. Implementations are basically the structure of your design, so you can have multiple representations of your design uh, within a single project, and strategies are basically the recipes or formulas that are used by the implementation tools when you run that implementation. If you look at the strategies, you can see there are four predefined ones and then there are ones that can be user-defined. If I open one of them by double-clicking, you see here are all the options that can be set. So for example, here are my synthesis options, my map options, place and route options, etc. So you can uh, define these any way you want and you can save them and reuse them in this project or in other projects. If we look inside our active implementation, you can see that we have a number of uh, files here, a number of folders which contain files. I have my input files, and the input files um, can mix any different kind of source type. I can have EDIF, I can have VHDL, I can have Verilog, and these can be all uh, mixed together. So I can have one file type, one project type that contains all these different files. Uh, new in Diamond 1.3 is the uh, SD, SDC files. Previously, SDC files were used, but not in the file list. They're now contained in the file list. I can uh, open them, and I can take edit my text editor. And in my text editor, I even have a template editor where I can uh, choose um, different options to be able to easily edit them in the text view. In the file list, I also have my uh, LPF constraint files, and these are constraint files that are used in the implement state, implementation stages, such as for map and place and route. Another folder for uh, debug files, these are used by the reveal hardware debugger uh, for implementing hardware debug into the design. There's a script file, which are scripts uh, generated by the simulation wizard. Uh, analysis files, which are files used by a power calculator or a timing analysis tool. And finally, a programming file folder, which contains XCF files, which are used by the programmer tool. In addition, inside uh, any implementation, I can also switch what's my active implementation just by selecting uh, one of them, right-clicking, and, and saying set as active implementation. Next, look at, look at some of the uh, UI capabilities in Diamond. As you see, we have tool views that open here in the report area. I can also take and detach 
any of these views as uh, independent windows. So you see here I have the report view which is opened. I can take and then work with it independently. I can also take and reattach it. I also have capabilities here for managing this uh, tool view area. So let's open a couple of existing views. Let's open the package view and then we'll open the netlist view. And so a common thing I might want to do uh, when using multiple tool views together is for example in this netlist view I might want to drop and drag into the package view. As you saw previously I can detach uh, tabs but uh, I can also take and split this tab group into two independent areas. And then by doing that, I can, they can expand this, and then I can easily drop and drag from one view to another to do assignments or other functions. So a nice UI capability. I can also take and uh, merge the tabs back in, and I can take existing tabs and move them around to conform them to the order that I want. So some UI capabilities. In addition to the tabs, I can uh, manage my layouts. So here's a layout, manage layout uh, dialog. And here you can see there are some predefined layouts and uh, customized layouts that a uh, user can enter. So you can take and manage all your layouts and save your favorite ones and reload them very quickly. Another important capability in Diamond is being able to take and um, parse your design and get more information on it. So in the toolbar here, I can say generate hierarchy. And when you do that, you get this HDL diagram view, which can show you the hierarchy of your design. Uh, but you also get a number of other views that open. So if we look in the uh, project-wide area, you can see that I get a uh, module tab, which shows me all the modules used in my design. I get a dictionary tab, which shows me uh, all the elements in the design by hierarchy, not just modules, but signals, ports, and other resources. And I have the hierarchy tab. The hierarchy tab obviously shows me the hierarchy. I can expand and collapse it. But new in Diamond 1.3, you can also show me resources used uh, per each level of hierarchy. So if I take and bring this out, let's resize this. <clears throat> and you can see some of the resources used. So for example, for each level, I can see registers used, carry cells, and instantiated elements. Depending on your design, you may have other resources available also, so this is not a complete list of the types of resources reported. Additionally, in the hierarchy view, if I uh, right-click on any of these levels, I get uh, a menu which can, lets me take and look at other views, connectivity views or symbol views for that level of hierarchy. I can go to the source code that defines that level. I can go to the source code where that level is instantiated. And I can also generate test bench templates, either in VCL or in Verilog, depending on which level of hierarchy I have selected. I can also generate a schematic symbol, or set this as a top level of design, or run uh, rule checks, BKM best known method checks. Another tool for managing your design in Diamond is the Run Manager, which I'll invoke here. <clears throat> the Run Manager takes and lists all the implementation strategy pairs in your design and allows you to run them in parallel. I can turn these checkbox on and off so I can run one or any number of these implementations in parallel. In addition, in Diamond 1.3, I can right click and in my menu I can select um, a different level, a, a different implementation as being active. Or if I had done a multi par run such that there were multiple uh, par runs for each implementation, I could select on the one that I want and make that as the active par run for that implementation. Next I'll show some of the cross probing capabilities in Diamond. I'll open the floor plan view, then I'll open the physical view, and from the physical view here I can go and select any of these particular nets and then right click and then say show in. So this allows me to show that signal in any of the other uh, relevant views. So here you can see it's now showing this in the uh, floor plan view. So you can see everywhere where that net is connected to. Another view in Diamond is ECO Editor, which I'll open here. And this allows me to do uh, editing of the physical net list for a few specific common tasks. So for example, I can do I can change some of my SysIO settings. I can edit a PLL if I have it in my design. 
I can take and uh, edit some of my memory settings, such as updating uh, the memory contents. And if I make any of these changes, they're recorded in the NCD change log. Another tool in Diamond I want to show is Programmer. Diamond 1.3 includes a uh, new version of program, Programmer, which is uh, a more full-featured replacement for the ISP VM tool. And let's expand Programmer so you can see it. And here you can see um, that you now have a scan chain listing. And here you see you have a scan chain listing. For each device on the scan chain, I have an enable bit, which I can turn on or off. So I can program either single or multiple devices at the same time. I have my cable settings, so I can see what the cable configuration is very easily. And I can click on this and open or close the cable setting. I have a number of functions here for being able to easily program it. And I can easily program the device just by clicking on the program icon. And you can see the status here. Next, let's look at Timing Analyzer to see how we can do timing analysis. So here I've opened the Timing Analyzer view, and it's gone and performed a first timing analysis run. And you can see uh, my settings. You can see uh, the various preferences I have for frequency. And I can select on any of these, and you can see the results or a schematic path for those. In addition for being able to analyze my results, I can actually change my timing preferences without having to re-implement my design. So I just go to the uh, spreadsheet icon here. And this opens a timing preference spreadsheet. And I can go to the timing preferences. I can edit my frequency. Enter that value. Go back to the timing analysis view. And here you'll see that this icon is rotating saying update. And I only have to press this icon and that will now reread in the new values and perform a new timing analysis. And from this you can see that uh, the frequency is in red, meaning that it did not meet required timing preference. And here you can see the negative slack. Next, let's look at some of the dynamic updating of some of the tools in Diamond. So let's open the spreadsheet view. And here you can see my spreadsheet view and a number of pin assignments. Some of these pin assignments I've done directly and some of these pin assignments have been done by place and route. So here you see these values. If I take and go back to my process list, which have been run, if I go back and rerun this translate step option, this now updates the, the data in memory, and you can see that the pins that I directly assigned are still there, but the ones assigned by place and route are gone because that data is no longer current. Lastly, in addition to the, uh, all the GUI capabilities we've seen in Diamond, Diamond does offer a, a full scripting environment with TCL. So you can go to my TCL tab here. You can see various commands that have been run uh, for, for opening them. In addition, I can get help on my uh, available TCL commands, and you can see a bunch of uh, TCL data dictionaries that are available, and I can get help on a specific data dictionary or help on a specific command. So this has been a brief overview of the Lattice Diamond software. Diamond software is available for download for free. It supports uh, several popular FPGA devices, including the uh, Mach X02 device. It includes the Synopsys Simplify Pro for Lattice Synthesis tool. It also includes the Aldec Lattice Edition Simulator, and it's available for download uh, at this direct link shown here. In addition, there is a Diamond Subscription Edition license. This is an annual license that adds support for our Certis based FPGA devices, including the ECP3 and ECP2M device families. And this license also allows you to run both the Diamond software and our older ISP Lever software. Thank you for watching this overview, overview video. Uh, several other videos are available on the Lattice website for specific areas under Lattice Diamond.